Hello, this is Kai, and I will be doing a video for assignment two, problem number two. This one is called the Hailstone, a Hailstone sequence, basically created by a famous mathematician who says that uh, if you were to take some number, and if it's even, divide by two, if it's odd, multiply by three and add one, take that answer, and then keep continuing uh, getting more answers until our answer is equal to one. And basically what we're going to do is replicate this said program. So what we want to do is start off by clicking on the file. So you go to Hellstone, okay? And again, you have the same package with the ex same extension to the console program. And you have the public void run, the standard gimme stuff. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to take into account what methods do we need uh, to create this program and really uh, as of now you could make this really broken down um, I'm just gonna break it down by using one method uh, again you can use multiple methods but um, for now it's just learning how to use methods appropriately so we'll stick to using one method and we want to start off by putting in the uh, method so we'll call that method hail equation okay so hell equation is what we're going to start off with and of course with the method we want the stub that goes with it so we'll put private and because it's an integer we'll have an output of an integer and we'll have an input of also an integer as well and we'll call this term okay so, in, like I said before, if you don't like the squiggly lines, um, go ahead and just put a placeholder in there. We'll call it return of zero to just get rid of that um, little squiggly line there. Now, there's another squiggly line here. That's just because you need to have an uh, input uh, integer. And so, again, here, I'll go ahead and put term. And uh, now your squiggly line's in the term. That's because you need to activate the... Uh, initialize the variable. Now, uh, in this case, you can initialize the variable inside public void run because we don't have uh, any any uh, any uh, variables interacting with each other in different methods. But we're starting to break out a bit, and we want to be able to have methods um, interact with each other. So, what we're going to do this time is put the uh, variable initialize it outside so that it can interact with other methods now it can be a bad thing but um, most of the time if you have a good handle of where all your variables are that should not be so much of a problem unless you're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of variables then that might be a little problematic but for now I think we'll be okay so private int term equals zero. We initialized it to zero, and that's the input for this one. That will not be the input for this one. So this term is different from that term. See how that highlights only this term? So you can see it interact only with this one. This term stands alone to interact with only the Hale equation method. Okay? All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the method for Hale equation. And so we'll use my favorite uh, math operation, the remainder, and we'll create the if condition statement and say if the term uh, remainder 2 is equal to 0, so that means it's going to be an even number, we'll go ahead and um, do the equation for the even. And since it's uh, one or the other, we'll just put else for the odd case and put in our equation for the odd case. Now it would be possible to use just the term to get the value and I'm okay with that as well but what I'm thinking of doing is combining the um, the method to also have it print out the process as it goes so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and introduce another variable and I'll initialize it inside this time called result Okay. And so here, let's take a look at the first um, equation. Uh, if it is even, we want it to take half of it, right? So our result would be equal to term divided by two, okay? And then we'll have it 
print out that process. So we'll put uh, term plus is odd. Don't forget about the spaces. Oh, not odd. Is even. So I take half, just like that. And then we want the result on the other side. So there we go. Here's the result. And with this uh, printout, we want to also return the results. So we can get that output of that value. And uh, then what we want to do is to create the uh, odd case. Okay. So here, uh, result would be equal to this time three times n, uh, or term in this case, plus one. That would give us the value for result and have it print out uh, likewise the same process step. So copy and paste, the wonders of copy and pasting. Print term is odd, so I take three n plus one and get the result. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and return the result so that it gives us the output. Now notice what happened. Because uh, it worked in this case and it works in these other cases, this return zero is no longer reachable. So we want to go ahead and delete that because it's going to cause an error if we don't. And that's the method for the Hale equation. All right. So now that we've finished that, we have to go back to our program so we can finish it up. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to have it uh, read some kind of term, you see, and uh, the input that we put in will be read as the term. So we're going to put term is equal to, and remember this term is different from the term in the equation, so they're not interacting uh, to cause us any trouble. And we're going to go ahead and read the int, okay, and I told you this is the shortcut for combining text with an input. and it's going to read a number, and that number, I guess we'll use the template, so it would be 17, and 17 would go into the equation and it will do the operation. Now, notice how we have it do the operation once. So if we want it to be in a loop, we would have to use something like a while loop, because we don't know how many times it's going to do it. So while uh, term is not equal to 1, because that's when it's going to terminate, um, it's going to continuously repeat this, uh, this sequence. And what do we want it to do? Well, we want it to keep going until finally the term becomes uh, 1, correct? So in order to do that, we, and this, since we put the uh, initialize the, uh, the term outside, we need to keep a running total of the term. So we're going to have hell equation um, with the equation of term replace the um, the old value of term so that term gets updated every single time and uh, once we do that um, let's see here are we done no not quite because at the end it says we also want to take into account the number of uh, times it took to reach one so that means we need to set up some sort of counter as well so I'm gonna go ahead and this time yeah I stick it here private encounter to count the number of times that this process will happen and we'll put go ahead and put the counter inside this loop so it's going to increment every time it's used and then outside of this we'll go ahead and put in that print line statement saying that the process took blah times to reach one and we know it's going to reach one so I stuck in one and now everything seems to look pretty good. Um, no problems there. There's the whole program. So let's go ahead and run it. And just for uh, for making sure that this is right, we are going to go ahead and use the same uh, template that they gave us. So 17. And look at there. So basically, it's the same exact text except oh well, there was just one grammatical error. So but uh, I fixed that by putting the columns in, and it says the process, ooh, two, 12 to each one? That's uh, gonna be took, so I'll just go back and make that small fix, but other than that, everything looks pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and fix that really fast. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.